today I am going to be trying to survive 100 days in Hardcore Tensura mod. I'm going to try and defeat all the bosses and become a Demon King. This was that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I spawned into the world as normal, right next to a village and a campfire. I had a book in my inventory that allowed me to reincarnate, so I did it. Well, game over. That's the Hardcore series done. I then woke up to my new skills, Predator and Perceiver, and began testing my new slime body to see what I could do. Turns out I have a massive stomach, so I started gulping down all the water in the river to hopefully get the water manipulation skills, but I needed a lot more water for that. What's so good about my new body is that I can transform into any animal I absorb and have the same number of hearts as them. Rather than punching a tree for wood, I devoured a villager's house and got all the wood and cobble I would need to craft all my starting tools. I then made my way into a labyrinth of caves and began absorbing iron and coal to smelt for some armor as I would need it badly as a slime. While mining, I found some magic ore and landed in a very dangerous spot. What the heck is that? I tried to consume some lava. It didn't work. I would need some fire res skills very soon since I'm kind of a danger to myself at the moment. Day two, I smelted all my iron ore and made a set of iron gear. I then made my way into the caves feeling much more confident until I saw this. No, no, no. Stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. While fighting some spiders, that thing chased me all the way out of the cavern. That was close. In a new cave, I picked up some herbs that I could turn into some insane healing potions. I then mined some magic ores, some diamonds, and this really cool blaze powder ore. Then I got jumped by a group of zombies. Thanks to my perceiver skill, I didn't take too much damage because I dodged their attacks. Day three, I discovered that I had a stomach, so I stored all my precious items into my belly. Before leaving, I found a big lava cave, mined some more ore, and left the surface where I consumed a smaller lava pool and not the big one in the cave. Yeah, not my smartest moment. Day four, I crafted a bunch of diamond tools and armor and made my way back into the cave since I wanted the black lightning skill from creepers and the fire manipulation skill from some lava. I spent days five and six mining ores, eating lava, and finally got the extra skill, fire manipulation. Yes, no more fire damage. Day seven, I took down a bunch of creepers and finally got the black lightning skill. Day eight, back at the surface, I decided to explore and look for a new base to make my home. I came across a black structure which was covered in blocks that were impossible to break, but luckily, I'm a slime. After seeing how little damage my black lightning did, I tried to get a sword hit and got hit into the labyrinth. Luckily, I managed to use my slime jumping power to get back to the top after nearly dying and losing my world. Nope, never again, never again. Day nine, I came across a night spider. I tried fighting it, nearly died with full diamond, and then finally took it down when I saw a pillager tower, so I left since that would be safe, right? What the heck is that skeleton? I made my way up into the tower since this skeleton's arrows never missed. My skills did nothing. This was looking bad. I made some windows to try and find the skeleton, but he was nowhere to be seen. Where did this stupid thing go? Ah! I ran away. Being a slime is just way too hard. Day 10, I then found another welder. And so I attacked him with my fire to hopefully get a new skill. To my surprise, I got the severer skill, which I couldn't get to work, so never mind. Day 11, I found a snake, bought the snake, and became a big chonky boy I managed to defeat earlier. Day 12, I turned some villagers into witches since I can control lightning and consumed them to start getting some souls. After two days of traveling, I found a pixie village in a dark forest. This could be a really good place to live, and luckily, right next to these pixies is a goblin village. So I became their leader and made this my new home. I named the goblins after some members of my Discord. Damn, he's got the drip. With Arcanus being the village chief. By the way, you should join my Discord. For now, we were a very poor village, but that would change very soon. Day 15, while outside trying to get some wood, I got attacked by a spider and then it hit me with some sticky threads and stopped me from running away. No, 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 no. I fought back by building up, forgetting that spiders can climb, like duh. So I hit him with my fire attacks. It then started raining, so I couldn't even damage him with my fire. I knew my goblin boys would be in danger if I left him alive, so I took down the spider with my diamond sword and retreated home. Day 16, I spotted a dragon, quickly noped out of there, and instead started fighting an armosaurus getting the body armor skill. Day 17 to 18, I found some villages and kept exploring before heading home and trapping some pixies. You guys are now mine. You're gonna stay here forever. The next day, a new goblin wandered into the village, so I named him and started making some insane potions of healing. These potions are great. You can upgrade them from 25% regen to 50% all the way to 98% healing. So I stuck with 50% for now. I returned day 23 and began making a wall around our village. I needed to keep my goblins safe, so this would do. On day 24, the Great Wall was complete and we now had a defense against dangerous monsters. On the night of day 24, I heard a noise above and noticed that an army of phantoms was attacking our base. So I went outside to try and lure them away from my boys. Nice lightning fiends! I had protected the village right as day 25 had rolled around. I spent today hunting and admiring my wall. Things were looking good. Day 26, I jumped into a hole to start mining. Ah! Day 
27, I went home with some blocks and started upgrading our old straw huts. I spent the next six days tearing down and rebuilding the houses until I had a design I was happy with and then built two more. Day 34, I found a lair containing the core of Charybdis, but I was not anywhere near being ready yet to fight him. So on day 35, I created some upgrades and went out on a mining trip. Day 36 to 37, I easily got a stack of obsidian and a bunch of magic crystals to turn into magic steel later on. On day 38, while heading back, I found a new goblin village, so named every single goblin there after a member in my Discord, so now I had 30 subordinates. Day 39 to 47, I spent building three more houses for the village and my house, which was a much more grand scale build. I tried to keep the overall layout of the village from before, and I think it turned out quite all right. Day 48, I made an enchanting room so I could stand a much better chance against the much stronger mobs, which turned out to work well as I absorbed a giant bat and got COVID, uh, vampirism, and an ultrasonic wave skill. I then finished building the three other goblin houses using the exact same style as before. This finished off my village completely. Let me know how you think it looks. Day 49, I tried to start a raid to hope hopefully get a totem, but I accidentally burned the only villager alive with my skill. Wait, no, he's burning! Day 50, I found a dragon and ran away very fast straight into a cyclops, which I also ran away from. The life of a slime is still very hardcore. Day 51, I found a massive tree that would let me go fight the spirit protector Colossus. So I set a waypoint and headed caving for some stuff to prepare. Day 52, I found a weird structure with a single night spider inside. Oh, a magic steel ingot. Oh, two god apples as well. And then all chaos broke loose. This was very bad. I managed to run away from the ambush of these spiders, but some of my goblin subordinates sacrificed themselves for me. You guys will be missed. Day 54, I found a river and consumed all the water to finally get the water manipulation skill. This was going to be so useful for traveling and fighting Ifrit. Day 55 to 59, I continued caving and found a bunch more magic crystals since I would need a lot more for some better tools. Day 60, after nearly being kidnapped, I headed back home and along the way got the berserker skill from another welder. Also, while heading home, I tried to fight a spider and got jumped by a very thick zombie. Nope, no, 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 I'm off home. Day 61, I made a spatial blade. This thing was fun, but it nearly broke in two minutes. I then decided to make some Armasaurus armor. So I headed to a mesa to try and find find some to loot, but I came across an orc lord and his army of orcs, so I went home for now. Little did I know he would build up his army to an insane amount. My god, I'm gonna have to fight that, oh no. I crafted the new armor from the Armasaurus, and it broke after I walked into that. Then I tried to be Gigabrain and lured a dragon over to the orc lord's army. He wouldn't stand a chance. Then the dragon did nothing but attack me, and so did the orc lord's army, so I decided to head home. Day 62, I made a magic steel pickaxe and an insanely cool sword. While in the caves, I fought a creeper with an ender pearl, and that could have ended very badly. Day 63, I turned my magic steel into demon steel. This would allow me to make an insane sword to help me try and take down some of the OP bosses in this mod. Day 64, I finally got thread manipulation, which I then proceeded to never use. I then absorbed an other welder and a centipede for two new skills. Day 65, I came across a brand new orc lord and decided to try and fight him. When that wasn't working, I decided to pillar up so I could hopefully get to a safe place. After nearly dying, I saw that the orc lord had eaten a pillager and become an orc disaster. Disaster. Even with my new sword, I stood no chance and nearly died multiple times. Day 66, I ran away and bumped into Shizue. Oh, if you didn't know, she has the greatest spirit, Ifrit, inside of her. So if I could beat her and consume Ifrit, I would get a double boost in my magicules. Shizue was already doing insane damage, and when Ifrit came out, I kept panicking and hitting my morph ability and turned into many weird mobs. Why am I a rabbit? Why am I a snake? Ifrit's damage output was so crazy. The only reason I could escape was thanks to my water propulsion skill. Thanks to my newly made sword, which applied an ice effect, I could slow Ifrit down and get some good hits. I dealt with his clones and had some insanely close calls. It was looking bad for the both of us. When I finally won, it upgraded a bunch of my skills and my magicules, and I was just getting started. I tested my evolved Black Thunder skill on some cows, and it was so strong. Day 67, with my newfound power, I challenged another raid and almost died again. What's a dragon doing around the corner? Day 68 to 96, I spent this entire time absorbing the souls of pillagers from a pillager tower and gained my 10,000 souls that I needed to become a demon king. But I still needed to beat an orc disaster to get a demon lord seed. What's that block doing down here? Wait, why is there another dragon? So on day 97, I made some OP gear, gave it all some insane enchantments thanks to my 30 days of pain. And while testing out my new gear, I found that I now had a powerful aura that burned anything close to me. This oh. is awesome. Day 98, I began my intense fight with the orc disaster. Even after firing all my hell flames, I knew I was going to lose this fight. He had an insane amount of regen and my armor was running low. Mid-fight, I noticed something coming towards me on the horizon. Wait, what is that over there? No, a dragon. Oh no, go away, go away. I had to then fight both a dragon and the orc disaster. This was not looking good. So I did the only thing a sane person would do and transformed into Ifrit. So I had a huge 
huge amount of hearts to bring this fight to an end. After an intense showdown, I managed to win and got my Demon Lord Seed and the Gluttony skill. It was time to evolve into a Demon King. In 1999, I became a Demon Lord and decided it was now time to fight Charybdis. I placed the core next to a villager and after getting exploded, I waited patiently for something to happen and nothing happened until I slept in the villager's bed and he got mad. Thanks to my endless regeneration, I was strong enough to take him head on and with my powered up magic kills now nearing 150,000, I could spam Black Thunders hundreds of times before running out. This was an easy fight. I had an insane strategy for getting rid of his shark minions. My new gluttony skill with some good timing allowed me to eat all the sharks in one go. After finally taking him down, I absorbed his core and gained the ability to manipulate gravity so I could fly. Now it was time for my final fight, the spirit protector. Day 100, I made it to the big tree and entered a long, endless hallway. This is it, my final fight. If I die, it's over. I entered the fight very nervous since it was a very enclosed space inside this room. Thanks to my new ability to fly, I could zoom around the enemy and deal massive damage. Thanks to my regen, at the end of day 100, I finally beat this boss, made it to the top of the tower and made my way out. 100 days as a slime completed.